how you graded yourselves and the work you do with the institution. Uh, and it's in reverse order, so number nine is board education. For the past three years, you've um, graded yourselves 4.61. Uh, there are only three categories that went down, but they went down slightly, very, very little. Advocating for the college went down slightly from 4.62 to 4.60. Uh, board leadership went up significantly from 4.59 to 4.81. Institutional performance went down very, very slightly from 4.83 to 4.81. And the CEO board relations went down slightly from 4.93 to 4.82. But those are not significant in the least bit. It's just a matter of fluctuation. You can see that each year most of them do fluctuate. Those were those five. And then direction went way up from 4.25 to 4.68. Community relations went up from 4.7 to 4.75. Policy role went up from 4.39 to 4.79. And board organization went up from 4.68 to 4.84. <laughs> so all in all, uh, you feel that you're doing a good job and you feel like you understand your role and the role of the institution and the work that we're doing in conjunction with you. So the next steps are up to you. Any questions? Any questions come from here? Thank you for a very positive report. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, sir. And if you, after you look at it, if you have any questions, just let me know. I remember filing an agenda sponsorship request from the Association of the U.S. Army National Meeting, the Central Texas Business Resource Center, Mr. Campbell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Central Texas residents by providing financial and in-kind support 
to the Central Texas Business Center. The DRC offers various programs designed to assist individuals that uh, to help them overcome barriers to uh, successful employment or starting and growing a business. We have uh, similar uh, organizations that we provide information to as well uh, and through the DRC, and that is our uh, Transition Assistance Program and Warriors in Transition, uh, which are programs that CTC also does work with. Uh, there are various other things that the DRC does, but again, uh, they include us in their publications and have various other information that goes out that has to do with the college and also provides, uh, it, it's, it's a gateway for potential students. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Dr. Wall? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next item is number six, discussing 2022 proposed budget. start off by making sure everyone knows uh, as in any other presentation that I give up here, if there's ever a question please ask Mr. Yiannopoulos Dr. Carter, anybody has input uh, please add it at any time um, not standing on uh, flat policy here, we have a question something I did bring up, perfect I thank you again for, you know it's funny I shared with Tina, I've got notes everywhere that say 1116, but 1113 came out of my mouth. So I'm going to do my best to get all these numbers right. Um, and I, and I, I'll share with you, if you'll turn to page 15 of the budget, you know, that's primarily the page we're going to look at. And I'm going to share a little of how this budget book is kind of built and it works from the back forward. You know, the back is every department that we have on campus, but it's not the individual departments. It's the sum of all those departments. Mm -hmm. So when you see mathematics, that's mathematics everywhere that Central Texas College is. I don't have 40 math departments in here. That number's rolled up. And then from there, you go to the, keep working your way forward, and I have the Texas campus versus the Continental International breakdown. And then this page is the overall budget with everything consolidated with the titles that we use that are acceptable to the state of Texas and kind of roll into how we do our financial reporting. So that's that's how the book's put together. To remind everybody, you know, we start working on this budget. Uh, normally, January is when we have our first planning meeting among the administration to talk about ideas that we think we might do. Uh, you know, we've got to be way ahead of a lot of this stuff that some of the other colleges don't have to do because we are so closely tied with the military, we need to make sure that they all have any changes that we make to any tuition rates to them well in advance. Uh, so we've got to start working these numbers as early as January. This year is a little bit different. Because of everything that was going on in the pandemic and the fact that we saw how much happened last year, and if y'all will remember, we were with back to y'all immediately after the very first meeting we had when the pandemic hit over a year ago talking about changes we had already put in place. So the minute last year's budget was approved, we started working on this year's budget, which that's getting a little too fast for the old guy. I'll give me a couple months break, but it was, uh, uh, we, we started immediately thinking about things we had to do, where we were going, what was gonna happen. So this process, you know, this is this is an 11 month process that we're looking at right now that, that it's taken to put all this together. And, and it starts, you know, I told you we have math for the whole world in one place. But all this starts by all the deans and division directors get their budget forms sent out to them, they all get them electronically, and then they push them down to their staffs below to get their input, then they work it back up to me, and then I put the numbers in, and then based upon the information that has been discussed with the chancellor, the deputy chancellor, and the folks in this room, then we then put all that in place. So it goes out to everybody, comes back, and we go from there, and we build it up from here. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big process. You know, just some, somebody like me, I, I scratch my head sometimes and say, come on, I send a budget package to you guys. You can't get it back in like 10 minutes. Well, I work with every day. 
So, you know, for me to look at one individual budget, come on, how hard can it be? But, but that's not what these people do. Some of these folks are, you know, they're, they're academians. That, that's what they, they deal with. So it takes time for everybody to get their information back and then for us to go from there. So this is a product of pretty much almost everybody's work at the college because you have to get input from everybody as to what you need and what you're going to put in there. The way I think I'd like to, to discuss this this year is if you'll remember, we had a pretty in-depth workshop in May where we talked about the major items in the budget and what our recommendations at that time were to the board and what we were going to do with those items. And I, and I want to remind you of each of those and then if there's anything that has changed significantly from what we discussed and said we were going to do to what actually has happened in this document, I think it's important that you know that. So if you'll bear with me, we'll, uh, we'll go to work on that stuff. The first thing that we started talking about was the uh, Appropriations, that's always top of the list. Where are we going with appropriations? Well, when we put the number together for, for appropriations, uh, we were looking at uh, $14.8 million is what we had anticipated receiving in general appropriations. That was the number we had in May. Um, and, and those of you that know anything about our legislative system, that number changes four or five times until they finally approve the appropriations bill. Fortunately, it, it changed, but it only changed three hundred thousand dollars, fourteen point five. Not extremely significant, and especially if you look last year, what we had in the budget, which is your oh, maybe a third of the way down the page, you see under state allocation, education in general. Last year we had fourteen point seven million budgeted. This year we have fourteen point five million budgeted. So we're only talking about two hundred thousand dollars difference between the two fiscal years. Uh, thank goodness, not a not a unbelievably negative impact on the college. And the reason for that is when we built last year's budget, we actually anticipated this cut coming, but we thought that they were gonna actually cut us in the last year of last biennium. And we figured, as we always do out here at the college, we always uh, budget as conservative as possible. We built the current year budget that we're operating in, assuming that the cut was gonna take place last biennium, and the fact that it didn't come into this biennium, we'd already positioned ourselves to where this $200,000 is an insignificant number compared to the main and half dollars that may have been if we would have not taken that into stride last year. Next major item is tuition fees. If you look at that number, almost at the very top of the page, they're almost flat. What we, what we decided to do when we built this budget, first of all, was not to increase tuition fees. Um, anywhere. The main reason for that is, once again, the same reason for all of our local constituents and our, our local taxpayers. Times are tough currently. We didn't want to do anything to change the tuition rate. We felt we were going to be able to balance the budget without the tuition rate changing, so we did do it. Um, interesting, what I want to point out though in that number, $38.1 million is what, what we did when we looked at this number, we looked at what our actual revenue was, tuition revenue, in the last full year before the pandemic hit. So that was 2019. And in 2019, we, we had tuition revenue of $39.4 million. So we didn't want to build that budget and think we would get all the way back to pre-pandemic numbers, but we felt like our numbers this year would be better than they were last year. So we kind of closed the gap a little bit between what we did the last full year before the pandemic and what we anticipate next year. And if you'll remember, it was about a month ago I shared with you uh, my concern at the time with how bad the numbers were looking at that point in time for the fall semester, which at that time we were down well over 30%. Well, that number is now down to about 7%. And we've still got a week before classes start um, and had a conversation with uh, with, with General Weaver, I guess, yesterday, and uh, we kind of laughed because we said, you know, students, some of them kind of wait till the last minute, and we laugh because, yeah, we know they do. So we're hoping that we get a pretty big influx potentially in this last week um, to, to get some more enrollments to get that number back up. But we feel confident that we have a good tuition, a good tuition number there. Normally, the biggest expense item that you have in a budget is for, for an organization like ours is salary and benefits. Um, you know, that, that normally is going to represent 65 to 70% of your budget. 
which it does. And if you'll remember the discussion we had back in May was that we have finally seen, you know, for, for six or seven years, we've tried to hold the line really hard on our salary. And we have not had a change to our pay scales in seven years. Um, and the cost of living in the last seven years is up in the 13% neighborhood, but we did nothing at all to our scale. So if you'll remember, we came to the board with a recommendation that we would present a, and, and put in the budget an 8% increase to the scales, which is what we did. The estimate at the time as to what that was gonna cost us with salaries and benefits was $4 million. The actual cost is closer to about three and a half million. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with even in this budget we have now, at the present time, we've got 50 open positions. So of course, when I'm, when I'm making my estimate, I'm making it off total positions, but I'm not gonna give a full salary increase to a open position. And, and as, long, as well as that goes, when you have an individual leave who's a 30 year tenured employee, you don't replace them at the same salary level and you replace them at a lower level. And we've had some folks that have retired since we started all these plans. So that's why that number came in a little lower than what we had anticipated when we put the budget. We also talked about uh, the ADA requirements, if you'll remember, based upon uh, the Department of Justice audit that went through. And this budget includes uh, just under $1.3 million of modifications to start the process of those, of those ADA renovations. There's a couple of things, and that's everything we talked about as far as at the workshop. The one thing we didn't discuss at that workshop at the time was where we are now with the higher education relief funds. We knew then that we had the higher education relief fund, but at that time, we knew about the first little piece of pie. And since then, we've had subsequent piece of pies that have come in, and they've been a whole lot larger than the first piece. Um, so this budget includes, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget the number, it, it includes $22 million worth of higher education relief funding that we didn't talk about at the workshop because those were the last two funds that were awarded. And the biggest piece of it, even though the larger number of her funding was related to the institutional dollars, we're gonna spend more of those institutional dollars in the current year than they're gonna spend student services dollars. So there's a bigger number in this proposed budget for student aid than there is for, is for institutional money. But you can see right in the middle of that page where it says her lost revenue, that $9.1 million is the amount of her funding that is going to be remaining related to dollars that the college can spend on the institutional side and the way that that grant is written we can basically use those institutional dollars for anything we want to use them for so we're bringing them into the college coffers and then from there we can spend them as we need to continue the mission of the college uh, so that number is in there that was not at the previous uh, meeting when we discussed it and that includes We can use that money for anything that we want to use it for. So, so at the present time, when we built the budget, all the expenditures that we needed, we included in the budget. And you can notice if you look at the one number up from the bottom on the right column, this budget has a reserve of $2.1 million. So actually, we're going to, based upon the budget that's built here, we anticipate we will have revenue in excess of expenses in the upcoming fiscal year. Part of that is related to some of those higher education relief funds that we will then in turn determine in future years the best way to spend those for the institution. You know, since we did have uh, the windfall in those dollars, you will all remember, because y'all have all been on the board for at least two years, some of you many more, over the last several years, because of our decline in enrollments related to go all the way back to the global war on terrorism and then after that with all the changes in the military volunteer education, we have been shrinking our expenditure base. 
which is the right thing to do. As your revenue gets cut, you have to, you, you have to either uh, come up with a new way to generate revenue, raise taxes, raise tuition, which we didn't want to do, so we started cutting. Well, there were many items that we cut from budgets that people really needed, and we kind of got to where the equipment and software, more than equipment that we currently have, is not doing what we needed to do. So as part of that higher education relief additional revenue, the chancellor said, hey, deputy chancellors, go back, look at your folks that have asked for items that we have cut the last several years, determine what we could potentially consider adding back into that budget. And we did do that to the tune of about $2 million worth of items that went back into departmental budgets for items that we have been delaying and putting off, and now we're able to do it in a year and still balance the budget. So that was a great question you asked, and we were able to do that. The other item that we have in this budget is we've got about $4 million worth of capital improvements. Uh, about a million dollars of those are regular operating items that people need. You know, Mark, Mark might have a, 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 some equipment he needs. Uh, some of the departments have different equipment that they need. Those items are in there, but then in addition to that, we've got about $3 million in here for some actual improvements to the facilities that were approved previously as part of the master plan. So we've got them in this budget, but as a reminder to all y'all, those items will still have to come before you every time they're presented for approval because the dollar amount will be as such that will need your approval. Uh, you know, some of them, and, and anybody who lives anywhere in this area, you know what the storm did to the roads. And we've got some of those issues still here with our streets and our roads. So there's there's $600,000 built in there to do some, some improvements to repair the roads. There's $600,000 for improvements to the uh, planetarium. Uh, some of the other buildings are smaller items. The, the lift station out on the front part of campus by the, by the duck pond needs to be replaced. So those items will each come to you individually because of their dollar amount, but they're included in this budget. You can see that on that line item three up, which is $4 million. Last year it was $676,000, which in my 30 years of doing budgets, that was probably the smallest amount we ever had for capital improvements in, in, in a specific year. So, that pretty much summarizes the items that we talked about that are now in this current budget. Once again, if you look at it, total revenue and expenditures are $137.9 million compared to $107 million last year. The majority of that difference is related to the higher education relief funds that are in here. Um, everything else is fairly consistent to what we had in the previous years. And it also includes the dollars that we had discussed for the salary increases. So if anybody has any individual questions, and even if you don't have them now, because I do know you just got the book today, hot off the presses, it was printed yesterday morning. Um, all of y'all should have the phone number. If you don't have it, you've got my email. Con don't be afraid to contact me anytime. Those of you that have, Charles knows, he, I'll, get, I'll get a call from him on the weekend, potentially. That doesn't bother me. If you have a question anytime, call me, send me an email. I can respond to your questions. It's a whole lot easier for me if I have a chance to answer your question before you ask me about it a week from now because I may not be able to pinpoint an exact answer a week from now because there's a lot of information. Your question, Mr. Gordry? Yes, sir. I've got a question on Mr. Trippy and along with Ms. Merlo. Uh, the fact that we're not increasing the uh, tuition, would that behoove us to publicize that quite a bit? Would it be beneficial or is both the uh, community colleges remain the same? Reasons. Ask that question. The uh, well, national uh, media has publicized, fire sector publicized, advertised the uh, uh, Southern New Hampshire University, the 
taxpayer going to maintain their no tuition rates for two years or whatever? And I, I didn't know it. And then if somebody has told them that that's beneficial. Their low tuition rate, which is at least three times more than our tuition rate is, but it's, but it's low. So that. Well, I'm not, I'm not addressing <laughs> what their thing is. Sure. I'm just sure. saying is ours significantly uh, lower right. in order to. Do you know what the other presidents have shared, Jim, with what uh, they're, they're doing with their rates? Most, most, about half of them are retaining their current tuition rates, about half of them are going up. Uh, if I remember the, uh, and Barbara's not here, the advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara, where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, in the, uh, the two TV spots that we have, doesn't it? I think one of them indicates that we are not raising our tuition. It says the same. Um, we normally don't like advertise a specific tuition. We just say most affordable, which is still true. Right. Right. Okay. But when when the media want information out about our budget, that is our golden opportunity to let them know that we are not raising tuition. So that's a good way to get that information. Our, our tuition is, is so low, it, it really, I don't think it's a factor. And the fact that uh, there's so many opportunities to get financial aid and to get scholarships or to get tuition assistance, um, and now the CARES, the CARES Act money, uh, it, it's just, it's, a non, it, it's really a non-employer. I think the, the thing is getting these students back in school, getting them back in the classroom, and uh, running the trade right now, they can more by staying home, you know. Just be fun about it. They're double sending them money and they're making fourteen dollars an hour for McDonald's, so it's fun. But the point I'm trying to make is the publicity of lower rates, you could just get these four or five students out there. And it's publicity that's free to us. Uh, why not make it? We have things going on on social media all the time to talk about our tuition rates and they can see if they haven't gone up. Um, yeah. Where are you? Write it down, Mr. Armstrong. The last item I, I, I forgot to mention, we, we talked about it briefly yesterday. Just for some of you, you know that we have uh, the Chancellor mentioned it and shared it with you that the services contract that we have with CENTCOM in Europe um, was up for renewal and they approached us directly um, and offered it as a sole source and Bill knows from his contracting year that doesn't happen very often. We've had a few of them and sometimes that's been the greatest thing in the world because we knew we didn't have competition, they knew we did a good job and you know we could potentially make a dollar or two. Well, we all, the administration all feel that it was offered to us this year because they figured they've been taking advantage of us and they might be able to get it one more time uh, because that contract has been costing us quite a bit of money. Uh, and there's no room in that contract. They wouldn't offer what the chancellor had suggested to them, which was like we had in the Navy contract where we had a flat administrative amount and then when you order something, we'll, we'll, we'll charge for that. They wouldn't go for that. So we declined, as the chancellor had shared with you earlier, we declined to bid on that. Um, I know Dr. Carter and the chancellor both received quite a few phone calls from people that they know uh, in government contracting, um, trying to get them to budge, but you know we, we can't. The government's got deeper pockets than, than we do, so they can figure out how to do it, and we're not going. But I wanted to share that that was that's two and a half million dollars that are out of this budget uh, in the form of revenue and expense both. Uh, but, but the Europe campus um, is still open. We still have a contract over there that we have to fulfill. We have some smaller contracts. Uh, we actually just submitted a bid in the last few days for the driver's course over there. Um, and we're bidding those as if they're the only contracts we've ever had. And if the government wants them, they're going to have to pay for them. So um, we're hopefully we can get to uh, 
save a few dollars over there on your contract, but the biggest problem is, as those of you know, that track that stuff is, there's just not that many soldiers, sailors, Marines uh, over there taking courses as there used to be. They don't have the opportunity. Um, we still have to man those locations, but we don't have the students um, to, uh, to support them. Uh, and that's, uh, that's becoming an issue. When that contract's up for, for re-renewal, that'll be another time for us to have to look real close and determine if we're gonna be able to continue to offer stand-up college classes in the Europe theater. I got one question uh, on the last page. Talk about compared to housing, seven hundred thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Uh, does that include what I determine as all the buildings over there? No, sir. No. Okay. Mark, that was. This was the first four on the south side, and then the plan was to uh, demo the rest. So we're going to renovate the first four. Yes. To throw that in the office space. Yes. So at some time in the future, then we'd rather allocate money to destroy the rest of them. We would do it. We, we would do it all basically at the same time. So we would uh, look at putting a contract out to go ahead and demo. There's 13 houses over there, so we would go ahead and look at doing uh, all of them, but the four that we're going to keep. Uh, those buildings there would be utilized to go ahead and free up some additional space around the enrollment center. Uh, so the police services. Uh, records, um, foundation, and some other areas would relocate to those space and then allow us to, to do some other things in future years around the enrollment center. And the, the, so the 700000 would include the demo as well as the renovation of the four buildings? Yeah, so it was the, the renovation of the four buildings. Um, those buildings do have asbestos, so we would have to abate them and then it would uh, include the demolition of the remaining. Your clarification on that because it looks like there's enough money to destroy all of them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions, Mr. Woodard? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm still up here. <coughs> Next item, number seven, is the Hilltop Holding Incorporated Investment Advisor Services contract extension, Mr. Woodard. Yes, sir. This is uh, something that we do annually because we. Uh, we have contract that we'll offer that will have one year options. This is the last option of the investment advisory services that we have with Hilltop. The recommendation from the administration is that we will go with the, with the contract. The price remains the same. The price of that contract has not changed since I've been doing the investments for the college, um, which um, I started doing those in 2013. Um, so that's, uh, I'm sorry, 2003. Um, so, so those rates have remained consistent. We, when we go out for bid, um, they, they come back and they come back with those rates and nobody else bids anywhere close to those guys. Um, you know, they're a, a large, large organization and they work off of quantity more than, uh, more than uh, quantity. So they're able to keep their prices low. They do an unbelievable job for the college. They are always looking out for our best interest for investments that are available. Um, when I need to place money, they look, but even when I'm not in a position where I'm looking, if something comes up, they say, hey, Bob, this might fit into your portfolio. Take a look at it. Um, they also help us write our investment policy, which we're required to write and keep up to date every year. And as a matter of fact, with some of the folks that I deal with directly over there that are the principals out of the Austin office have been involved on the committees that work with the legislature to write the law so they know what the law says. So who better to help you write your policy or the experts? Um, on top of that, I know Doug's doing some audit work right now. And there's some items that's really not related to what they do. But some of the questions that the auditors were needing answers, I knew that I could get them from those folks and they were more than happy to help us provide that information. So I can't think of a better vendor that I work with personally for the college. And, and I stand 100% by the recommendation that this is the last option year of that country. Any questions, Mr. Liberty? Thank you, sir. What's the, what's the option if this one ends? It, it, will, it will run from September 1 through August 31. 
Yeah. So, so, so what's your option? What are your options? What I will do is probably in February, we will have to set out a request for qualifications because this is a services contract. So we'll start out with a request for qualifications as a professional contract. I'll receive bids. We'll do an analysis of the bids and then we'll entertain whoever the top um, bidder is that we rank to provide us with costs. And if we're happy with that, then we'll come back to the board with a recommendation that we enter into a new contract. And that uh, Hilltop could possibly be one of those. Yes, ma'am. I certainly hope they are because they have been they have been tremendous for us. Any other questions? Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, members of the board. <clears throat> I'm here to seek a board approval or we'll seek board approval of the 50K list. If you recall, the 50K list authorizes the administration to issue blanket purchase reporters to vendors on a list of goods and services for purchases of 50,000 or more. In the aggregate during the fiscal year beginning September 1, 2021, you should have those in your packets so that you can review. Please note that all the vendors on the 50K list are either part of a cooperative or under contract and were procured in accordance with Texas statutory law, CTC policy, and procedures. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Gonzalez? Thanks, sir. Item number nine is the Silver's Management Contract Award. Good afternoon. We have four uh, vendors that uh, the option year two uh, contract period needs to be exercised. Heights Lumber, Texas Materials, uh, Joel's Flooring, and Wood Environmental. I've listed each of the four below. I've listed uh, some of the services that each of those particular vendors provide, the contract period, and then the uh, estimated spend. I will go ahead and make a quick note on uh, two Texas materials. Uh, this is one that, as Bob had mentioned, within the budget, we may be doing a larger asphalt and pavement project, which would certainly exceed the $60,000. The reason I just put down $60,000 was because uh, I didn't want the board, there, there, there were uh, questions in the past um, where uh, the thought was that if, if the board approved the set dollar amount, that it would somehow bypass me then having to come to the board to get approval. Uh, and that I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are aware that that's not the case. Any project that would exceed $50,000, regardless if it's on the list, if it's on the 50K list or anywhere else, we would uh, end up bringing to the board for approval. So. Uh, Texas Materials, uh, if we do go forward with an asphalt project this year, that would be something that would be brought to the board. And then I wanted to point out uh, Joel's flooring. Uh, if you guys remember, uh, there were uh, two projects that we had approved for uh, Joel's flooring. The first was they helped uh, with the storm damage repair over in the Technology Center building. Uh, and then they're also helping us on the ADA project for some of the exterior work. So there are a few other projects uh, that they have going on throughout campus. But uh, with this, the administration recommends the approval of each new option year for each of the four uh, vendors listed above. Any questions or comments? So moved. Y'all just, we're not moving yet. We're not moving yet. We're not moving yet. Thank you, sir. Maybe that was my fault, right? The, the next Next item number 10 is the Even Nursery and Garden Cure Contract Award. So uh, we just talked about the uh, storm damage. One of the, the vendors that um, did not fit into our 50K list that we had tried to go ahead and procure through was for uh, landscaping and nursery services. So uh, this is one that we had to issue a request for. Well, actually, we did an invitation for bid to go ahead and get any pricing. Uh, we had received one proposal and it was from Iman Nursery and Garden Care here in Colleen. Uh, the, uh, we have been working with the insurance carrier. They have reviewed the bid submission, uh, have gone ahead and said that it is acceptable. And so uh, this will be coming next week for approval. 
Uh, the estimated spend uh, per the insurance adjuster is uh, just under $500,000. We'll see what that uh, actually turns out to be, but I would certainly think that's on the definite high side. But insurance is going to go ahead and look at uh, paying for whatever landscaping and nursery materials that are needed. So uh, this will be something that, that goes forward, uh, a recommendation to award a contract to Emon Nursery and Garden. I have a question for Sean. We're, we're replacing a lot of bushes and shrubbery, basically. Right? Yes, there are uh, trees, uh, shrubs. Um, I don't have the, I actually have the list, but I'm not going to go over it. It was fairly extensive. Uh, the, the insurance company to come up with that actually brought in a consultant who walked around with uh, William Duggar uh, throughout the entire campus. Uh, looked at all of the damaged shrubbery, plants, trees, uh, and then from that came up with a count and uh, came up with a cost estimate. Thanks, Sean. Item number 11 is the Sovereign Fire and Range Liability Insurance Policies. Mr. Chairman. All right, good afternoon, Chancellor and members of the board. Um, as you remember, the last month I told you that we'd be bringing the cyber and the firing range uh, policies to you this month. Uh, because of the way the RFP process worked, we actually won't be receiving the bids until tomorrow. And so once we get them, then the committee will go through them and uh, we'll come up with uh, who we think is the, the best for both of those. And so I just wanted to come up here and tell you that next week, I'll actually be bringing those numbers to you for discussion and vote. I just didn't want to want to leave you hanging since we uh, did mention last month that we'd have them this month. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Hickman? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Item number 12 is a chance to propose travel schedule. I included in your packet on my proposed uh, schedule dates for the first quarter. Ah, and as you can see, uh, and by the time of media right now with COVID, I don't know how many of these are going to end up getting canceled or, or pushed back, but uh, that's going to be my proposed schedule for at least through December. Um, so I'll present that to the board. Any questions? Thank you. 